Today, we're looking at Robert Oster's Dark Chocolate. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, Robert Oster's Dark Chocolate is kind of a violet or purpley brown. I, I, I don't, it's very purpley for an ink called chocolate. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I put the ink into a different pen for day. I then put it into a Noodler's Ahab with a modified flex nib to take my notes for this video. But before we get to the writing samples, let's look at the sciencey bits. And up first is the chromatography, and I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. And we see that that light pink starts immediately pushing up the page. It gives us kind of a magenta color. And then maybe that darkest area on the top is kind of a brown, maybe. But the blue's coming through, which shows us that it's going to be much more of a purple color. I, I don't know. The one on the right is done wrong. I let it dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it in the water for that 10 to 15 seconds. And really, you can't tell the difference between the two of them. I see a little bit of those of that like highlighter blue popping through on the right one that I see on the left one. But basically, it looks the same, which makes me feel like there's no resistance to this ink. And for this ink, resistance is futile. It stands no chance. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it is to clean out of your pen. I let that smear dry for three days, three of them, before I tested it. Looking at the highlighter, it performed rather well on there, considering. It did spread out some, but it's not the end of the world. I actually would be willing to use this ink if I had to highlight over it because it seems to do okay, which is very surprising when we look at the water, which completely reactivates and is completely removing it from the paper. I'm seeing the white of the paper around the edges of that water that was on there for 30 seconds. Pen Flush does very much the same thing. It does pull a little bit more. You are seeing more of the white of the page comes through, but I really do think that the water is doing so well that that's all you should need to get it out of your pen. Bleach, as would be expected, is completely annihilating it. Taking it and leaves just a white circle. You don't need to use bleach to get this out of your pen. For the inks I've tested, I've found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Robert Oster's Dark Chocolate has a viscosity of 2.72, which is a normal viscosity, a normal flow. To find my average dry times, I average my writing samples done with the extra fine and medium nib on Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia paper. For the inks I've tested, I've found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Robert Oster's Dark Chocolate has an average dry time of 15 seconds, which makes it normal. This is a normal ink. Now, Let's look at the writing samples. I got this ink in sample form, and it is a great example of why you should buy inks in sample form. I don't know. The Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, the Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Now I use these to keep all of my writing samples consistent. Let's look at Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. It does have shading in this very fine dark chocolate violet ink. I've been to Australia. Now granted, I don't live there, and I didn't live there for a long time. I spent like six weeks there. Their chocolate looked like everybody else's chocolate. But for some reason, the Robert Oster chocolate line is magenta and violet. I mean, chocolate and dark chocolate. I'm going to push through this. The extra fine has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and no shade. 
9 seconds to dry. Medium has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, 15 seconds to dry. The scrubby shows us that we're going to get no color variation. The smear test shows us that we're going to be able to recover this dark chocolate, violet ink, that doesn't look anything chocolate-like. So we go to Homeway River. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. It does show some shade. You see, I'm going to go ahead and push. I feel like the Micro Machines man here. The Extra Fine has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. 16 seconds to dry. The Medium, fixing my earpiece. The Medium has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. 21 seconds to dry. The extra fine and the medium scrubby show us we're not going to get any kind of color variation, which we don't. The smear test says you can't recover it because it's Tomori River. That smear definitely looks like a violet, not a chocolate. Rhodia paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. It does have shadings of violet. Dark chocolate. The Extra Fine has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and no shade. Thankfully, at least it's now a dark violet. Chocolate. And, no. <sighs> Ten seconds to dry. Medium has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. Seventeen seconds to dry. I just feel lied to again, Bob. Just, just saying. The Extra Fine and the Medium both give us no color variation in a scrubby, and we don't expect it. We don't get it. The smear test says you could likely recover it. So I tested this on black and red paper, which gave us no bleeding and no ghosting. The 1.1 gave us no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and no real shading. It's not even a dark violet. Chocolate. It's not even. It's a definite violet. Who are you fooling? Not this guy. Extra fine, no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, seven seconds to dry. It's definitely a darker violet than we had in the title. And an even darker violet yet goes to medium, where we get no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. 12 seconds to dry. This particular dark chocolate, violet. Scrubby gives us no color variation. We don't expect to get it in the writing. The smear test says you're not going to recover this writing if you smear it on this paper. So I tested Limon because this paper or this ink was basically a loss to me. So let's try it on some paper that's probably a loss. And it's a loss. It bleeds. It bleeds a lot. Even with the extra fine, it does not touch the page underneath. You couldn't use the other side. The 1.1 has feather, has spread. No halo, no sheen, no shade. The extra fine has spread minor feathering. The feathering is not horrible. It just is a little blurry in spots. Considering this paper doesn't perform very well with almost any ink, that would be the end of the world if this is what you had to use. No halo, no sheen, no shade. Eight seconds to dry. The medium spread and it is Blurry all over from the feathers. It's horrible. Horrible feathering. No halo, no sheen, no shade. 14 seconds to dry for all of those feathers. I've seen birds take a bath. They dry way faster than that. They swoop down. They get in a little bird bath. They're there for a few minutes flapping around some. They throw water all over the place. And they fly away. They're not going to do that with soaking wet feathers. But look at this. Soaking wet feathers. 14 seconds to dry. The cat would eat the bird by then. Scrubby for the extra fine and the medium show us that we get no color variation. And we got no color variation. The smear test says we would likely recover it. But why would you want to write with this ink on this paper unless this is the tone of dark chocolate violet that you really like? That's all I have for the writing sample. Instead of finding inks that look like Robert Oster's dark chocolate, I would prefer to find an ink that would complement the color on the page. Now, it's supposedly a brown, but it's much more of a violet or purple ink. So it made me really want to go towards a pink type color. 
and I chose Robert Oster's Pinky because it's a pinky magenta kind of color. That's why it's called Pinky and not Pink. Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I would invite you to subscribe. So what do I think of Robert Oster's Dark Chocolate? Think Bob lied to me. I don't like the idea of my chocolates being purple. I could be wrong. I don't know, you know, all the colors of all the chocolates in the world. A very dark brown, a black would work. A brown would work. Violet makes me feel weird. That aside, talking about the purple that is dark chocolate, I don't think the purple's horrible. I think it's a very nice purple or violet ink. Thanks for watching.